Facebook page. Say hello, Maggie. Hello. All right, so um, tell us about yourself. Uh, well, I guess um, I work in creative technologies, mainly in emerging tech. I'm a producer, so I, that's how I would identify myself. Producer of? Experiences, um, particularly parallel universes, uh, multiverses, mm -hmm. alternate realities, that kind of thing. Um, I've been doing this work for about 15 years now. And this is through the technology, you mean like with computers and sound? Yeah, so um, I've been, I have a company called Afi World and I've been um, producing experiences particularly with my partner Kim but with other partners as well, mm. Kim Yule, um, and we you create immersive experiences, um, usually in community based sites mm -hmm. and those experiences are designed to support the spirit of places and the people who visit them. So I guess it's a cross between an artistic and a spiritual practice. Okay. as well as a kind of creative technology production company. One of the things I've listened um, to the sound of was at the library. So tell us about that. What is that about? Yeah, so our most recent project in Whangarei, because we moved here about a year ago, amazing place, can't wait to talk about that, mm -hmm. um, is that um, a project that's in partnership with a group called Sestima. And Sestima are a local um, organisation that mm. support um, youth um, particularly underserved youth to have orchestral training when mm. they wouldn't otherwise. So I've actually watched them. It's amazing. Yeah, and I've, I've talked to Michelle. I'm going to have Michelle here sometime um, next month talking about that. But yeah, so how did you get involved with that? Well, um, Fiona Douglas, who um, is still associated with them and I think used to be one of the people leading Sistema, um, she um, heard about us, through, I think, through the networks and said, would you like to do something with us? We got some funding um, thanks to creative communities in Whangarei. Okay. And what we did was we partnered with her and brought in a guy called Nick Gru, who's a local uh, music expert who's currently working at Whangarei Girls High. Wow. And he facilitated the group to um, make some experimental improvised sound samples that were um, inspired and interpreted from the site next to the old library. So they mm. went out and they kind of went, oh, what kind of sounds are here? People talking, wind. And so they went to different kinds of instruments and created those sounds. And then what we did was re-recorded them with um, Tim Bell, who did some good recording with us. Um, he's got good, good tech recording gear here. And um, my partner Kim created a, we've got an installation essentially that's an interactive sensor-based installation. Yeah. And we loaded it um, in and around the old library so that when people walk past each of those sound samples is about seven of them mixed together mm -hmm. in different ways. So there's an algorithm that randomizes it. So each performance is new according to who passes. Wow. And it's like a way of bringing awareness to the environment and what would normally be a transit space. The yeah. space is kind of normally a walkthrough space. So mm -hmm. how do we celebrate the space as its own thing and get the kids connected to it and the people learning about Sistema's wonderful work. So a lot of our projects are like partner projects that have multiple outcomes like that. So it's a good example. So um, you've been doing this for how long? I'm working particularly with emerging tech and this kind of thing probably about 15 years, wow. mostly in New Zealand about 10 years. Yeah. Um, and I've been working in large scale facilitation, strategic development system, complex system change now for about almost 30 years. Wow. This is something that um, a lot of people don't understand is that the technology side and they, you know, a lot of people get, okay, what is this, what is that, and and you, I think it was on Monday on the radio, this is what I'm trying to get my, oh, no, sorry, it was on news, I was at my parents' place and the news was on. Did you watch that show? Uh, it was just like this little thing, it was like, um, technologies in news on it has been driven but surprise, it's been driven by females. That was a tagline kind of thing. And I have a bad memory with stuff like this, but and I think that this is something that's amazing, um, because in the past it's been like the nerd boys, you know, with computers. And now it's this huge move and this growth and this appreciation that they they you know, like I was talking just before about geek girls, that there's this other side of technology of us in this um, you know, in this whole field with computers and uh, with digital tech. How do you feel with, um, you know, with working with the kids? How many, you know, do you see a balance of both genders involved or do you just see like a lop side to that? Um, you say, I mean kids generally when we're doing yeah. workshops? So we do a lot of workshops with young um, people and mm. 
I used to teach at AUT and CoLab, so okay. I used to teach creative technologies as well. Wow. Um, the amount of um, young women coming into tech is still disproportionately low. Mm. Um, but I think what's happened is in creative technologies, particularly at the leading edge of that, there's much more movement for young women to go in there because creative technologies is interdisciplinary for a start. Yep. Secondly, it's a mix between things like humanities as well as coding, as well as arts and so forth. So it allows young women who are interested in coding to also do a lot of a range of other things. Mm. Um, and it also, there's a number of areas um, in creative tech that are opening up that also have a great deal of flexibility around hours. So you can freelance, for example. Yeah. So um, women who maybe came, were out of the industry, have come back, have children because they can see that there's now more of an opportunity to outsource and freelance in yeah. that area. So I think there's lots of opportunities and, and local schools like Whangarei Girls High are doing amazing work around building digital structure, infrastructure, yeah. digital skills. Um, and I know that Northland, um, North Tech are also building some of that area as well. They've got a mm. number of, um, Jade Morgan, for example, is one of the digital people there along yeah. with my partner. So, you know, I think there's, Particularly in things like emerging tech, um, I know that there's a number of other people working in augmented reality in New Zealand particularly, yeah. which is kind of unusual, other women for example. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a, a burgeoning place for young women to be working in, partic yeah. particularly creative tech. Now you're thinking about animation as well, or you're just thinking about like um, sound? Um, creative tech is, um, I guess as I said, it's, an, an, it's a, quite a, a wide ranging Field. Yeah. Um, so when we teach creative tech or work in creative tech, we would be covering things, everything from um, animation um, mm. and let's say manipulated picture um, through to um, some of the stuff that we do, which is, I guess, interactive microcontrollers, augmented reality, virtual yeah. reality, um, that kind of thing. Um, it also involves experimental film. Um, yeah. It's quite a range. and, and We'll be talking in a moment, I'm sure, about Creative Tech Northland. I think it's quite a, a universal group. There's yeah. a lot of people who are using technology in different kinds of creative ways. And yeah. for me, I'm kind of a radical creative technologist. I'm interested in very traditional tech and how that's been used in different ways. So how people use woodworking, how people use fabric construction and so forth. Okay. Um, and how that, for example, interplays with some of the digital space. Mm. So I think that... If you're thinking of creative tech uh, generally is an inclusive way and it also brings in cultural elements as well yeah talking about cultural elements um, tell us about beers and ideas uh, so I mean Oriel probably is a better person to speak about that um, we have um, I guess this is an intro to creative tech Northland and yeah. I can talk about their or I can talk about their group and how that intersects so creative tech Northland um, began um, as an idea during Tech Week. Okay. And what I had noticed when I had arrived in Whangarei last year was that there was a number of amazing people doing cool things, mm. not all of them necessarily knowing each other or yeah. having a particular hub where they're connecting with one yeah. another. And um, my partner had been instrumental in starting creative, um, the Creative Technology Group in Auckland. And we were kind of keen, look, it was just started out as a way to meet some cool people over some yeah. drinks and have some hangout time. And um, I invited Matt Keane to be part of convening that group because he's local, he's really well known, and yeah. he's a good kind of, he'd become a friend at that point. And we'd had lots of conversations frustratingly saying, there's so many cool people, we're not talking to one another. Yeah. So we had that group during Tech Week, which was supported by Creative Northland, kindly, yeah. who paid for some chippies and like some nice food. Yeah. Um, and about 20 people turned up in the pouring rain yep. and were really enthusiastic right here at 116 yep. outside Beagle and look it was so positive and there was so much energy that we just continued it and so mm. it became every third um, sort of week um, here at 116 and I think what grew out of that is we started online um, with a Facebook group that was about 20 people and then we've got now almost 90. Yeah and all range of people and I think we've been really inclusive about having people join who are interested in tech but are maybe mm. fine artists not using that at the moment yeah. and just wanting to build capacity and I know that um, N Generation which is the group that's down um, that are about to do the innovative market that you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier um, they're an amazing Maori entrepreneurial digital collective that are growing yeah. in bounds and leaps um, down the end and I, I really wanted to partner with them 
um, not to subsume them within Creative Tech Northland, but to say, hey, you're doing this over there, we're doing this, yep. let's partner together. And so um, actually, to come to the Bears and Ideas, at our last group, we had um, Bram, who's the, who works in Mozilla, who's okay. located in Whanau. And he wow. said that one of the things he um, used to do was go to Bears and Ideas at a local place, and they would just shoot the breeze about stuff. Yeah. And so I think Tapiha and a few of the group heard that, and they think, oh, let's just try that out. So Bears and Ideas yeah. was kind of an end generation initiative where we brought some creative tech people along. Yeah. Um, and it's just really generating some ways that we could partner better together and do some stuff together in the future. Um, and we're looking at kind of maybe they can do a few of those and we'll do some creative tech meetups, which are kind of more yeah. talks here at 116. And yeah. just next year, just mix those up together because um, it's capacity building for what they're doing. And I'm really, yeah. really passionate about supporting their work. And it's also really good for some of the people working in creative tech to kind of mix as well. And, I think one thing I, I I noticed is that I mean out of that I got a, a designer for my magazine, and you know with um, because I would never ha had that I couldn't say well I'm I'm loading myself with so much work, if I didn't show up there I couldn't offload some work, yeah. and I think that's the, that's the greatness of it for myself, uh, but there's opportunities all the time for everybody and we we you know like we're we're in a place where we're the highest suicide rate in the world, in Northland I'm. Um, you know, New Zealand, and then we have all these amazing people doing amazing things, but like you said, they're not connecting, and so everybody's sort of over here and there, not knowing that there's all these amazing things. But out of that comes opportunities for our youth, and I think this is what um, the next level, and everybody's doing it, but not seeing what's being done. I mean, um, la I think it was last week, the week before, there's this uh, group, it's called the Suicide um, Suicidal Car Club, you know, if it, people can just, if anybody's feeling a bit down, they can just ring up and go, hey, um, can you pick me up? And they'll just take it for a drive. And it's kind of, and there's a great work. They're not actual psychiatrists. They're just mates there to, you know, to say, hey, look, let's go for, mm. let's go get, grab a cup of drink, a cup of tea or something and just talk. Mm. So I guess um, if I put my other hat on, which is someone who's worked in large system change and mm. complex change for many, many years, it's extremely common. Yeah. to have places where lots of people are doing kind of things and they don't necessarily know each other. And yeah. from the outside, you think, gosh, that's a small town or even a village. Mm. They should know, but actually it doesn't work that way. Yeah. And it's and it's um, and it, all it takes sometimes is just one person to know another and two large bits of a system can come together. Yeah. Um, and, and some of that stuff comes from weird kind of larger um, institutional dynamics, like the way things are funded, for example. Yeah. Or it could be to do with underlying cultural stuff or differences or even just geography of a town. Yeah. Um, some of that stuff can happen. But I think in terms of creative technology and youth, I think the major opportunity up here is um, we've got kids doing coding after school, yeah. young primary kids. Wow. We've got um, people at um, in the high schools um, doing a lot of really interesting tech development. Mm. I think North Tech are now moving into doing, a um, partner does a paper in interactive design there, for example. Right. So they're actually moving more, a little bit more in creative tech. Mm. So I think what we're seeing is an opportunity for young people not to be passive recipients of things like games, yeah. but to actually be able to learn them. I mean, I'm a real big mm. fan of um, don't be colonised by something. Don't become addicted to it and be colonised yeah. by the, 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 the reality that you're in create the reality for yourself. And it's yeah. hard to do that unless you can code in Unity, for example. Um, but, you know, weirdly, it sounds like it's hard, but it's not that hard. If, mm. if you get some help, some of that stuff isn't so hard. And then even things like Scratch and basic stuff, you can make some super basic games. Mm. Um, so there's, I feel quite passionate about young people kind of stepping away from being recipients of popular culture and actually being creators of popular yeah. culture. and. Also, how do we find distribution channels so they don't feel like there's, um, you know, that they, there's walls to do that? Mm. Um, and also, how do we find mentors so they're not posting crap? Like, how do yeah. we post things that are building them and their profile? Um, yeah. In our industry, your showreel is pretty much you. Like, yeah. if you have, like, a really good showreel yeah. of product, um, kid, you know, people can get into 
good positions, they don't necessarily have to have gone through a degree. I'll yeah. be honest. Yeah. Most of the people in tertiary listening to this will hate that. Yeah. But if you but have a, if you if you've worked really hard and got a good showreel, yeah. and, and more importantly than that, have got a really good attitude, mm. um, good communication skills, and self awareness then you have a lot of possibilities. And particularly for young women, I think what we need to get them doing is being more able to promote themselves, yeah. being more assertive about um, showing the things that they the can do. The weird thing is, you're talking about assertive, right? The weird thing is when, when females are assertive, now people suddenly think, oh, they're bossy, or they, you know, they're, they're feminist and stuff. And I've had this conversation so many times and so, so tired of that whole thing. Is that like, if I'm assertive, oh, yeah, you, you know what you're doing, mate. If a female does it, oh, well, it's a, it becomes a big deal. Yeah, um, I think it depends on the context. Yeah. Um, I think in a professional environment, to be honest, my experience is that if you, and assertive is someone who's got good communication yeah. skills, um, if you've got good communication skills, um, you come across as someone who's self-aware, hmm. and you've got, even if you haven't got amazing experience in a particular kind of coding, yeah. Um, as long as you've seen that you've tried and you've got a bunch of piece of work that are mm. resolved, then people will give you a go. And I think professionalism comes first. I think the kind of conversations yeah. you're having are things that I would imagine are also semi-social. Yeah. And secondly, they're probably not the kind of places that young women are really going to go ahead anyway. Yeah. And I, I think one of the biggest issues we have in pop culture, and I'll use that word with inverted bunny ears, yeah is that there's a lot of sexism and it reinforces sexism by yeah. the content. So you're seeing like these kind of semi-clad elf maidens with their boobs popping out. Yeah. And then, you know, I think what we need to do is get a lot of, um, just get the gender balance up a bit more. What we're going to see is content that's a little bit more meaningful. Yeah. But also, you know, I think in saying that, what we're looking at is a generation coming up now that are a little bit more woke. Yeah. And, that you know, they don't put up with seeing that stuff. Are probably more... Pro problematically on the other end of the extreme but I think what we need we'll notice soon is that we'll start seeing more awareness around that thing I mean I'm not I guess I work probably in more the arts and experimental area mm. but um, I'm kind of passionate about creative tech generally you yeah. know like how do we get those skills out so people again whether it's women Maori uh, Pacific Island cultures yeah. migrant cultures how do they tell their own stories yeah. but not only that how do they create the platform to tell their own stories? Because you don't want like some group coming in and just like, oh, I'll video you and do a doco on you, or I'll do a yeah. comic book on you. Yeah. How do they animate their own stuff? How do yeah. they code platforms yeah. so that they have their own websites, their own games, and then they have charge of, the, of their nested reality then? Yeah. And I mean, pop culture, I mean, like, because that's my my whole industry really and I also um when I, when I get I mean I've been to Armageddon right so um, this weekend I didn't spend much time looking at um at cosplayers but one of the things that always comes up in cosplay is the banners of it all because we talk about um most of the that sort of characters comes in from Marvel and DC not so much more now uh, but also now we've got the animation and manga and anime characters coming in and you sort of in one of the discussions is like okay so if you're slightly less clad you're dressing as a character but does that mean that you know there's this whole sexist thing that comes around it and I've, I know I have a friend who um, you know who's, we talked about this who's a who's a champion um, cosplayer is that you know like won awards for cosplaying and you know she's talking about consent like even at this weekend there was in Auckland there was a lot of gro touching and groping and stuff that you know that comes across and there were some of them some of course it's right to be upset um, upset about it and I'm always upset about that as well but then it's also on the honors of the person who dresses up as that and we go oh you know there's this balance and you're talking about balance and stuff but if you if you have a male saying hey look if you know you got to dress up a bit it just comes off wrong. Uh, yeah, it's a, I think for a session like this, it's probably yeah. a, a rabbit hole to go down. Yeah. I right. mean, I, I, I think we have a culture where if women are dressed in a suit, I mean, the, the extreme of that is women being fully clothed and walking around somewhere and then someone groping them and then their, their reality, they're yeah. still like some, something. So I think, um, I think that whole area is, we're talking about it because it's up at the moment yeah. and it's a really 
pertinent issue and it's yeah. kind of a complex issue that has lots of sides to it mm. um and i'm not i don't know a lot about cosplay that's not yeah. really my area of expertise sure. but i think um it's, it's just for me the bottom line is just people need to be empowered to do what they need to do yeah. in environments where they feel comfortable and aren't harmed exactly. and when we create environments like that then i think innovation and creativity abound you know yeah. and i think in terms of creative technology northland it's not about me or Afi World or Matt or any of the other things. It's all of us working together as a community yeah. to create an environment where everyone has the chance to have good skills, yeah. um, to develop themselves, to, to connect with others. And, and creative technology allows that because it's an interdisciplinary mm. process. You can meet people from different walks of life. Um, and in Northland particularly, we need to start getting people to be um, generating work here. So we yes. need to have businesses come here, um, get your website done here. Mm. Um, if you've got um, people that you want to code a game in Auckland and you need extra staff, then come up here because we have plenty of them. Yeah. Or set your business up here, even better, because we have enough people to do that. And it's cheaper. And it's cheaper and it's an amazing place to live and yep. you'll get a great house for very little. Mm. And you'll have staff who I think particularly in regions in creative tech, what you get people who can do a lot of different things. Yeah. So you'll get people who can do a bit of filming. They probably, you know, could pick up a 360 camera and do something. Yeah. Um, they could do a tiny bit of animation or they could try their hand at it. A lot of people know how at least a little bit of tiny bit of code. Yeah. Um, God, even I can code. And if Kim's listening, he'll be laughing right now. But it's like, you know, I can fiddle around with a website and hack it. Yeah. So I think lots of people can do a lot of different things and mm. I think in a smaller centre you get that more. Um, in a larger city what you ha tend to happen is you'll get much more people specialising. Yeah. So then you'll need to, you know, and it's nice when everyone pitches in on a project. For a producer like me, I'd much rather have somebody who can do lots of different things yeah. um, and maybe one thing extra well um, than be so super specialised mm. that there's not a lot that I can kind of help them do, you know what I mean? So but that also, um, being super specialised also restricts you from actually doing other things and therefore you're stuck in one sort of job and you're not actually able to do other things, you know. Little, yeah, you know, the, I mean, I think if you're in a pipeline mm -hmm. like Weta, for example, um, I was on a panel a couple of weeks ago with one of the Weta people um, looking at a degree course that Nelson, Marlborough um, Polytech are putting in, which is around mm. computer-generated computer imagery. Yeah. And so we were talking a lot about that, I mean, about the difference. And I think, for me, um, there's there's an important role for somebody who can spend six months making the hair on an ogre's back twitch. Yeah. There's an important role for that because we need people who are able to have that degree of, you know, specialism and yeah. uh, or to do very advanced rigging um, or very advanced lighting and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, when we're... We're doing that kind of sophisticated, um, um, you know, computer generated stuff. And by the same token, if you're in a small media agency, you know, if you're at Big Fish or this is level or something like that, yeah. if you can send somebody out and they can um, um, film something, come back, cut it nicely, yeah. um, they might do some little little effects in it that are super basic yeah. for yeah. motion graphics, maybe, um, and then they can even kind of put it into the website so it looks nice. Then that's like really good you don't need yeah. to you know what i mean so i think it's all both things are needed and mm. um obviously if you're a super specialist then you're probably going to be looking for work somewhere um, either overseas or in a yeah. main center yeah. um but if you're wanting to do something that is um you know work in a medium-sized agency then it's good to try a few different things i think mm. and creative techniques for that it, it means that you know if you're doing a degree in it yeah um then it means that you've kind of got all those different kinds of skills. So what is your actual background? Um, so um, I'm kind of a typical weird kind of creative tech um, hybrid. So yeah. my undergrad was in um, politics yeah. and education. And I spent a number of years um, training in group dynamics and facilitation, personnel, um, development, I guess that human dynamics stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, the next phase of my career, I guess, was more, um, it was an MSc in organisational development, and it was working with larger systems, so large-scale change process, um, working overseas in places like Africa with change process or negotiating things with eco-villages, that kind of much larger scale yeah. stuff. Um, and then what happened was I kind of got a bit um, tired of, I guess, doing the same thing in a certain kind of way. Yeah. And I, my creative self and spiritual self needed to catch up. And so 
when I was living in Brussels, I worked with an arts collective, and it was at that point that I discovered alternate reality gaming. Okay. Um, and so at the time, um, there was a number of people from ARGs um, coalescing in and around Europe doing some really interesting mm -hmm. stuff. And so I got a major grant from the European Commission to work with and carry out and create an ARG. Mm. Um, and what I did was when I came back to New Zealand, I did that in a DSL 1 school in Papakura. So we actually did a large scale AM, ARG process with the school itself. Yeah. Um, and then I guess then I started looking at, um, I'm, I've always been interested in parallel realities. Yeah. Um, and so I then um, explored that as a practice and that was when I started looking at um, augmented reality and geolocative I guess particularly together, yeah. and how one augments reality digitally. Um, so I haven't really been ever interested in completely virtual worlds, but I'm interested in the place between our world and the other world and how they mm. intersect. Mm. Uh, and so that that's, I, I guess you can see it's kind of a weird mix of kind of business strategic stuff, yeah. plus humanities and I guess you could say activism type stuff, mm. plus um, I guess it's probably more of that tech stuff. I, I mean, I can do tiny, tiny bits of coding, and I know a lot about lots of different kinds of tech, yeah. enough to be able to talk to someone about it. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I could kind of do a really basic video, but if I wanted someone to do it really well, really fast, yeah. then I would get someone else to do it. Like, I could do it, but it would take like a week, and someone else would go like, okay, I can do that in three hours, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the transitions would be a lot nicer. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you coming in. We're going to play, um, take a break, play a song, and hopefully R.L. Rook is here, and we'll be back with her in about five, ten minutes. Hey, thank you for joining us. This is Malfunction with the Geek Up show here on in Fungray. We're going to play, um, let's see, where we go? If I can find the right song. This is, well, a whole bunch of songs here. But I am going to, one I want to actually bring up while we're talking is called um, Television, Drug of the Nation. It's a song that came across with, um, in regards to, in regards to a um, comment made on, um, a meme, I think it was on my Facebook, and just, you know, you can be controlled so easily by what has been shown on TV, like the amount of murders for children that watch it and stuff. So this is an interesting little thing that came out a few years back. This song. 